Hello everyone, this is Dr. Surya. Today we are going to design a sanitary sewer. So in this problem it is given us design a sanitary sewer to serve a population of 5000 and the per capita water supply rate is 135 LPCD and assume N is equal to 0 0.013. So there is no lot of data is not given. So we are going to take assume and we are going to take all the data wherever you are necessary we are going to assume it of actually. So what is given in the problem is first data will be our population. So population is given to be 5000 and per capita rate is going to be or per capita supply rate or per capita demand we can call it as per capita demand is going to be 135 LPCD. LPCD is liters per capita demand so for one person to survive for one day we are in need of 135 liters of water now what we are going to do is that they have simply given the per capita demand and population details so first we have to calculate what will be the average water supply so average water supply is easily it can be easily calculated so which is population into per capita demand so here the population is 5000 and per capita demand is 135. So average water supply will be 675000 liters. So since because the per capita demand is given in liters, you will be getting the answer in liters. Now what I am going to do is that I am going to convert this into meter cube per second. Okay. So average water supply in meter cube per second is equal to ok so what we are going to do we are just we are going to convert this liters into meter cube per second so liters is 675000 divided by 1000 so this 1000 is converting your liters to meter cube ok next will be that uh, since because it is given that 135 LPCD that is for per day it is given so what we have calculated is 675000 liters for a day. So we have to calculate it for a second. So what we have to do is that divide by 24. This 24 is nothing but day to hour. Okay. So in order to convert the day to hour you have to multiply by 24. Then into 60. This is for hours to minute calculation. And into 60. This is for minute to second calculation ok so 675000 divided by 1000 into 24 into 60 into 60 so I will be getting my average water supply as 0 0.00781 meter cube per second ok so generally if you take whatever water we are taking in 80% of it will be converted into waste so keeping that as assumption so our assumption is average sewage discharge will be okay so the average sewage discharge will be 80 percent of water supplied so this is our assumption so we are assuming our sewage discharge will be 80 percent of the water supplied okay so as per this my average sewage discharge will be equal to so discharge i can write it as q so which is equal to 0.8 into 0 0.00781 since because it is 80% 80, 80 by 100 will be 0 0.8 so that is equal to 0 0.00625 meter cube per second ok so I am going to assume this to be my dry weather flow ok so before uh, going into it so you should know that there are two types of flow will be there uh, two categories will be there one will be my dry weather flow another will be wet weather flow so dry weather flow means that is a flow in the sewer that is normally available during our non-rainfall periods ok so do because in non-rainfall period means rain water will not be will not get mixed with into the sewer pipes so I am assuming this condition to be a dry weather flow that is in non rainfall period we are going to design a sewer that is the meaning of it that is no storm water will be present in the sewer ok only the waste that is obtained from our domestic or industrial or from public facilities or some groundwater infiltration if any is there 
okay so this is going to be the dry weather flow wet weather flow means amount of water that is flowing over the ground surface or pavements or house or roofs that is generally we call it as runoff so the storm water flow is also known as our wet weather flow so here i am assuming this flow to be a dry weather flow okay and when you are designing a sewer pipe we cannot take the value as such and design because suppose if extra so the population is going to be 5000 unexpectedly within the next year if the population is increasing from 5000 to 5500 for that extra 500 persons we cannot design one more sanitary sewer and go because that is going to be an uneconomical one so for that purpose what we will be doing is that we are going to assume a maximum discharge okay so maximum q for which the sewer is going to be designed will be uh sewer should be designed and we are also going to assume that the sewer is going to run full that means the entire pipe uh, throughout the pipe the water is going to run full it is not partially full it is going to be running full so completely the pipe is uh, running full of water this is what we are going to assume that is something like if the pipe is like this so the entire sewer is running full so this is going to be the diameter of the pipe so when it comes to the design of sanitary sewer we have to get the diameter of the pipe partially full means if the pipe diameter is like this so water will be half so this is going to be partially full condition and this is going to be running full condition so in this particular problem i am going to assume that the sewer is going to run full so that is going to be this condition okay so the pipe is going to run full so in that case my maximum discharge will be 3 to 4 times the discharge what i have got okay so here the average discharge what i have got is 0.00625 so in that case my maximum discharge will be equal to i am assuming it to be the 4 times my discharge okay so 4 times of 0.00625 so the maximum discharge will be equal to so i will write this as average value otherwise q average okay so q maximum q max will be equal to 0.025 meter cube per second so for this discharge we have to get our diameter so that is the meaning okay so if you see here the diameter uh, is going to be the sewer pipe is going to be circular in nature that is a one thing we have to keep in mind so we have to get the diameter okay so if it is running full means okay i can take my hydraulic radius value to be diameter by 4 so i'll tell you what is this they have given one value called n value n value is nothing but your manning's coefficient n is equal to 0.013 so this is the value they have given and this n is called to be a roughness coefficient so roughness value is going to be n okay so if this is given we have to use the manning's formula to get the diameter okay so manning's formula is going to be v is equal to 1 by n r power 2 by 3 s yes, power half so this is the formula v is going to be the velocity okay n is going to be the roughness coefficient okay and r is the hydraulic radius we call this as hydraulic radius okay and s is going to be the slope because if the water has to flow from one direction to another direction there should be a mild slope okay here the slope is not given to us so we are going to assume s is going to be 1 in 100 that is s value is going to be 1 by 100 okay and r value is also not given to us so if hydraulic radius is not given to us for the pipe which is going to be running full we can assume the condition to be pipe diameter by 4 so this is also uh, this is also given here so when it is going to be uh, running full means we can take our r value to be d by 4 so r is nothing but r is hydraulic i have told that r is going to be hydraulic radius hydraulic radius means area by wetted perimeter okay so if you take the area for a pipe or a which is going to be it's a circular in nature so which is pi d squared by 4 so this is the area for it and wetted perimeter will be 
pi d okay so wetted perimeter means if it is running full means this entire perimeter is called as our wetted perimeter because it is running full so if you cancel this you will be getting the value of r to be d by 4 this is how you have got the value of r as d by 4 okay now coming back here so uh, we know the in the formula if you see here we know the value of r we know the value of s we know the value of n okay so another one thing is that we are going to calculate our we don't know the value of our velocity but we have to calculate our diameter so here we will be using our continuity equation that is q is equal to av okay so q value is known to us which is going to be 0.025 we have determined it and area instead of area i can write as pi d squared by 4 okay and n value instead of v i will be writing it as 1 by n r power 2 by 3 s power half so instead of 1 by n it is 1 by 0.013 instead of r i will be writing it as d by 4 the whole power 2 by 3 s value is going to be an assumption value which is 1 by 300 power half okay so this is how you will be doing it up so again i am be telling 0.025 is equal to pi by 4 d square into 1 by 0.013 d by 4 the whole power 2 by 3 and 1 by 300 power half so instead of half i will put it as root okay so in that case we rearrange it I'll, i'll just focus on d value alone so 0.025 is equal to pi by 4 d square into 1 by 0.013 here i'll be having d power 2 by 3 divided by 4 power 2 by 3 so i'm just splitting it off into root of 1 by 300 okay so remaining all the values i'm keeping as such 0.025 is equal to here if you see here i'm having um d square and d power 2 by 3 so this can be written as d power 2 plus 2 by 3 that is d power 3 2s are 6 6 plus 2 8 d power 8 by 3 okay so which is that it can be written as pi by 4 d power 8 by 3 1 by 0.013 1 by 4 power 2 by 3 because this d i have calculated all earlier into 1 by 300 power half now if i simplify i'll be getting the value of um d is equal to 0.222 meter so this is the value i have got okay now i should check whether this value is correct or not okay so how how will i do that check so i know my continuity equation q is equal to av from here v is equal to q by a okay so v is equal to q value is 0.025 okay and a value is a is equal to pi by 4 into d square so i have calculated my d as 0.222 square which is equal to 0.0 38 so v is equal to 0.025 divided by 0.038 so which is equal to 0.65 meter per second okay so actually allowable self cleansing velocity is allowable self cleansing velocity is 0.6 to 0.8 meter per second So if you see here, I am getting a velocity of 0.6, and so hence the design is okay for us. So it is between 0.6 to 0.8. So the design is okay. So if you see that, if you want to design your sewer and drain, so we have to find out their section, their gradients. Okay, self cleansing velocity. Self cleansing velocity is the one we have to maintain it because. this will avoid your clogging of any solids and silting here okay so there are two kinds of velocity we have to take care of one will be my self cleansing velocity another will be my non scouring velocity okay non scouring velocity 
self cleansing velocity is going to be a minimum velocity so you have to maintain this minimum uh, you have to maintain this minimum velocity so that uh, for the flow in the sewer so that it will prevent the settling of solid particles in the sewage if the solid particles is settled at the sewer drain means then the water will not flow freely actually so what we have to do a particular velocity or minimum velocity has to be maintained so that the particles should not settle down at the sewer pipe so that velocity that minimum velocity is called as your self cleansing velocity next is called as your non scouring velocity this velocity is going to be your maximum velocity so the maximum velocity at which the scouring action of the sewer surface will not happen so the yeah, velocity should be maintained that there should not be any scouring should take place in that particular surface particular sewer surface that is called as your non scouring velocity okay hope you understood the problem okay uh, the playlist for the other subject has been given in the description do watch it and thank you and happy learning